Today, March 4th, Elementor released an update, version 2.5. In this update, there are six layout enhancements and two other features that you might want to know about. I'm going to show you all of them and how they work, where to find them, and where it's starting right now. Very first new feature I'm going to show you is something I've wanted for a long time, and that is being able to put elements side by side, specifically buttons. For example, these buttons right here, we have count me in and watch now, and they're top to bottom. They're stacked above each other, which has been the way Elementor does it for a long time. Other page builders like Brizzy will allow you to put them side by side. Using custom CSS, you can put them side by side. Now with Elementor 2.5, you can put them side by side without CSS. So click on any one of these, go to the advanced tab, go to custom positioning, change the width from default to inline. Do that for the second element as well. And now they're side by side. You might want to change the padding or the margin. Let's change the margin on this first one. So we have some space between the two. Margin right, let's unlock this. Margin right of 30 pixels. Now we have some space, we have buttons side by side, which is pretty awesome. If you try this and your element has a constrained width, you may need to change the padding within these elements. For example, if this button, because buttons all often have padding, so if the padding in this button is just too big. So if you go to the style inside the button, if this was say 60, and 60 on each side, then it's too wide. And now we're stacked again because the watch now does not fit in this area. So you may have to change the padding of your buttons to make that work, but either way, you're gonna have buttons side by side. And the next thing is absolute positioning. If you read Elementor's release notes, they'll say this stuff was never possible before in WordPress. It's not entirely true. This has always been possible with CSS and JavaScript. It's just taken some work to do the custom written CSS and JavaScript. Whereas now you can do it in a page builder, point and click, you can absolutely position things wherever you want on the page outside of the grid. And the grid is what websites use and web developers and web designers use to make things responsive. When you move outside of the grid, responsiveness becomes trickier and so it's not recommended you do it very often. But you can go to any element, go to edit it, go to advanced, go to custom positioning again, change the position from default to absolute and now you can drag it around wherever you want it. So let's just put it right up here. The width changes because it's outside of its area, but you can just drag and drop or drag it, make it bigger. And now we have our element up here. You'll notice we used to have to put things, we drag them into a spot, we get that blue line and we drop it there. That's where it'd go inside of the grid. With absolute positioning, you can put it wherever you want, which is pretty awesome. The bad thing is this absolute positioning can break responsiveness. So if we switch to mobile, Let's just uh, go to mobile here. We see the element's not there. Okay, where'd it go? Well, we can now scroll horizontally, which we don't want. That's bad, bad experience for users. But it happens because of this absolute positioning. It happens because of the content on the page is wider than the page itself, and absolute positioning is outside of the responsiveness. So we have to scroll horizontally, but we can move it on mobile to wherever we want. There's not much space here. I'm just gonna move it right there. It's a terrible spot. But at least now, our mobile doesn't scroll horizontally. You can't go to the side anymore. Now, if we switch back to desktop, it's still over here on desktop. And so when you absolutely position things, make sure you absolutely position them in mobile and tablets or hide them in mobile and tablets, depending on what your needs are. But make sure you address that. Otherwise, there's gonna be horizontal scroll and a lot of white space on the side, which is not great for user experience. The next thing is fixed positioning. So if we choose any one of these, let's choose this one, change our position under advanced custom positioning, change it to fixed. And now we drag it around. Let's put it down here. Oh, let's put it, try that again. And hang on, right, right there, yeah, there we go. Now we have this button down here that follows us down the page. You can put it wherever you want. Usually it's best to put it on the side somewhere so it's not scrolling right down the middle of the content. But this follows everybody down the page and it adjusts based on the viewer's viewport. This is different from stickiness. Stickiness is if you had this section being sticky right here, the strength and stamina. Once you get to this point, it would then follow you down the page. And then you'd have to use some Z index if you want to come all the way down to have it above other elements that are below it and things of, the, of that nature. Whereas this fixed position is not relative to a section, it's relative to the user's viewport and it just follows down the page for the entire website. You don't have to do any Z indexing, 
anything like that, just fix it using those settings. Let's just go there, advanced, custom positioning, and then where'd it go? There, position fixed. That's all you need to make a follow down the page. Now let's go to the very bottom of the page. And I have a bunch of buttons that I put into a single column. This has to be instead of a column for it to work. And these are all just the same button I duplicated just for sake of this example. Now, if we click on the column under layout, we have the ability to change the horizontal align option. We change it from default to start center end. That's what we had before. So let's see what those are. Start is just like this. Center, everything is centered. And everything is pushed to the far side. Now the new options we have are space between, space around, and space evenly. So space between puts the two starting or the, the starting button and the end button right to the very edge of the element. And then it divides the spaces between equally and spaces the buttons out. So this gap, this gap, this gap, and this gap are all the same. Now space around, it's similar, but not quite the same. So we have the start button and the end button indented a little bit. And the space between each one is the same, but the space on the ends is half of the space in between. So this space between each button is the same, then the space at the edge between the end button and the end and the start button and the beginning is half of the width of the space in between. Now space evenly has the sp same space everywhere. So the space at the beginning and in between the buttons is all the same. And if you set this up, then you delete a button, it then adjusts to the new space available. And now we can horizontally align buttons, which is important because now that we can put buttons side by side or elements side by side, we need to be able to space them evenly using this horizontal align. The vertical align option, which we can do for vertically spaced elements. So if we click on the column, we change the vertical align. We have the three options or the four options that we had before. Then the space between space around space evenly that work the same way as the horizontal options, just now they're vertical. So if we choose space between, nothing changed because these elements actually take up the whole space. So if we delete, let's just delete two of these. And now when we choose space between, nothing changed because we, we saw it happening as it goes, but if we choose space around, we see the spacing changes and then space evenly also changes. Space between the original ones like this and then we have the top, middle and bottom as always. And that allows us to space things more creatively and more succinctly using the vertical alignment options for elements. And that has to, again, be inside of a column. The last layout feature that was added in this update is the ability to add columns to text. So we have this piece of text here. If we click on it, it's just a regular text editor widget, but we now have the columns option here. So we can change it from one column to two columns. This is not the same as adding columns like you have here where you have these column icons. It's not the same as that. It's adding columns to the text itself. It only works in the text widget. So you can have your layouts look more like newspapers or your blog posts look like newspapers if you want to. You can change it to as many columns as makes sense. Five in this case is too many. doesn't look quite right, but I'm going to keep it anyway. You can change the column gap, the space between the columns. And those are the two options for creating those columns. And you can make pretty neat little looking layouts or even just have elements inside of a post or a page that have the columns instead of having everything have a column. Either way, you'll figure it out. But the point is, this is a new feature in this update. Another new feature, let's go over to the very top, is remembering where you left off in a tab. So if we go to this one, we haven't worked on this one yet today. So if I just click on here, it goes to content. And this is where it always went in the previous versions of Elementor. Any element you've worked on on a page, worked on it or not worked on it, it goes to this spot every time. Now, if we change it to, let's go to advanced, go to border. So now we're in the advanced tab, have the border open. Now let's go to this one. We haven't worked on this one either. So it starts in the content. Now, if we go back to this one, it remembers where we were. It starts in advanced and border. So that's new in this version. The last thing that's new is speed improvements. I haven't tested it, but apparently, the speed is improved by 50% inside of the builder. So when you're loading the builder in your website, when you're moving between menus, between elements, things will load 50% faster than they did before. This does not affect loading on the front end as far as I know, like I said, I haven't tested it yet, but Elementor says loading has improved by 50% inside the builder and that just makes working with it faster, more fun, more entertaining and easier. And those are all the updates in version 2.5. If you haven't updated yet, make sure you do. 
and make sure you back up your site first because you never know what will go wrong with these updates. Updates can break things, so make sure you back up your site. This is for the free version and the pro version, so everybody gets it. Check it out today. So that's how it works. I hope this video helps you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below or in the Pyro Facebook group. There's a link to it in the description down below. And make sure you click the subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. And next up is clicking one of these videos that popped up on your screen so you can get even better at WordPress. And until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.